You know, it's uh, you know it's bad if Carlo Ancelotti yeah. has lost his call, and he's definitely <laughs> lost his call there. But even so, Real Madrid with two goals against the Tafe, three points, it puts them back on top of La Liga's table ahead of a big weekend and a big stretch ahead, to be honest, when it comes to games for Real Madrid. The week, uh, the game after that in La Liga, they've got Girona, and they've also got the Champions League game coming against Leipzig. Alex Kirkland was pitch side for us today. Luis Garcia has been watching for us. It got a little bit feisty at the end there, Alex. What more can you tell us from the end of the game? Yeah, it did. It did. There was certainly a, a little bit of uh, a little bit of niggle, a little bit of controversy, a little bit of drama there at, at the end. You mentioned that you had the penalty appeal on, on Brahim. I was sat as close to that as I could have been, right behind the goal. And I, I agree, I could not believe that wasn't given as a as a penalty. Yeah, there were one, one or two little heated moments. I have to say, in terms of the game as a whole, it. It was never as close as I really expected it to be. I thought Real Madrid were pretty comfortable, certainly when they got the, the second goal. Yes, Hetafe had one or two chances, but never really felt like Hetafe were, uh, were in the game. And I think Real Madrid would be pretty pleased with, with how it went, except, of course, the fact that, that Rudiger had to go off. Let's see if that injury turns out to be anything serious or, or not. But otherwise, I think it was, like I say, a pretty straightforward win for, for Real Madrid and a win which puts them top of the table. They could do without losing Rudiger right now, Ali. <laughs> Absolutely. And even with Rudiger and Nacho, they, they've been giving up a lot of goals. And it's not just a centre-back pairing that is suffering. I think the back line as a whole suffers. And the lack of continuity and certainty in goal also has been an issue. But the Rudiger-Nacho partnership hasn't been perfect. The true and many Nacho partnership is not an improvement. And so if there was a position on the field that Real Madrid cannot afford to lose players, it's certainly as a centre-back position. If you are Antonio Rudiger, you're hoping that this was just a dead leg, that it was a knock, that the fact that you go through Mason Greenwood, that maybe he hit you on the side of the leg, and then that's it. If it's any more than that, and now Chouameni has to step in and play center back, if you're Alvaro Morata, if you're Antoine Griezmann, if you are anybody from Atletico Madrid, you're thinking, I'd rather have anybody else but Rudiger in the back line, whoever Carlo Ancelotti decides, Rudiger is a much better option than whoever else is, is left. Sorry, I thought you were going to say something. No, I wasn't. Oh. I, was, I was just <laughs> hanging on Ali's every word. Oh, wow. Thank but, you, Jack. Uh, but while we, while we are there in this area of the pitch then, Lunin, to stay in between the sticks once yeah. again. I, listen, I, I've, I've said all along that I thought Lunin was the better of the two goalkeepers between him and Kepa. It's, it's a difficulty in that your mindset has to be that the minute Coutoir is fit, uh, I'm, out, I'm out of a place. That Coutoir does have a long-term injury. We see how long before he, he returns. But I, I feel that Lunin... While both goalkeepers have made mistakes, for me, Lunin is just a little more solid. Um, and, and I thought it, the, the save he made today later on certainly justifies uh, Carlo Ancelotti sticking sticking with him for, for longer. I, I would double down on what Ali was, was saying, what was it pre-game or, 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 or at, at halftime, that allow whoever you choose to feel that they're the man. That nobody, want, no goalkeeper wants to be playing with the thought that one mistake, one bad performance, whatever it may be, I'm, I'm out. That, 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 restricts, that restricts the goalkeeper and, and, and in, in the end, forces them into, into making those errors. Um, so that, that being said, I thought Lunin did nothing to, to, to warrant being left out. I thought added to, added to that with, with the importance that he made. I think he gets a nod in, in the big game to come. And, and, and just one quick thing about Lunin. He doesn't have to do a whole lot in the game. But in the moment that he was called to make a big save, a big save, a game-changing save, because at that moment it felt like Hetafe were kind of finding their way in the match and Real Madrid had wasted a couple of opportunities to make it 3-0. If Borja Mayoral is able to put that in from a mistake by Real Madrid, now momentum is with Hetafe. In a big moment of the game, he came up with a big save. Of course he should be starting on the weekend. Is it more comfortable than you thought it would be, Luis, for Madrid? Yeah, more comfortable. It, it couldn't be more comfortable. <laughs> I mean, if Real Madrid wanted to play a game ahead of uh, of the Atletico de Madrid game at the weekend, he was expecting something like this. Um, uh, Getafe didn't put... I mean, we, we talked before the game what it was Getafe about. We, we all remember what uh, the Barcelona players were complaining, where the, the, the Atletico Club de Bilbao were complaining. And in the end, it was an easy game. No intention... No danger, not a threat at any moment. Even when I thought that the Getafe maybe was going to do 
Uh, Real Madrid yeah, was walking around the pitch, so there was no intention at all of the Getafe to try to get something tonight. And Real Madrid, they, they was just happy. It was a gift for Real Madrid. I know, I'm not saying that uh, Real Madrid, of course, they were not uh, in um, with the idea of getting a good result. Of course, it, it was. But you could see that the Real Madrid players didn't even put another gear. So, yeah, a very easy game, very comfortable game. Three points, and they continue. They are cruising mode in the La Liga at the top of the league, and now they have to look forward for Atletico Madrid derby. Yeah, they do. And, Alex, a lot more brownie points today as well for Hosselu. It seems to be that that's becoming a regular occurrence for Real Madrid this season. Look, he's a very useful player. He's a very useful player to have in the, the squad. That's not a massive surprise. I think we knew that he, he'd scored goals. You know, he scored goals for, for Espanyol. So, he, he, of course, he's going to score goals for, for Real Madrid with the kind of service you get being a centre forward in, in a Real Madrid team. Of course, he's not, he's not the big name that you might expect to be leading the line for Real Madrid. He's not a Karim Benzema, but he's a very effective player. He's a really good player in, in La Liga. Whether he has what it takes to do it at the very, very highest level, you know, let's see how far Madrid go in the Champions League this season and, and can he cut it there? That's maybe another question. We have seen him score score a few goals at international level for, uh, for Spain, but certainly in games like this in La Liga, I think he's really handy and, and you know, thank goodness that Real Madrid have got him because he's the only centre forward in the squad and they, they, they need him because um, you've got Vinicius who missed one or two chances today. You've got Rodrigo who has been, been pretty good but has had some, some dry spells as well this season. You've got Jubelium contributing goals from midfield but they need Hosolu. They need his goals. They need his presence. I think he's a, I think he's a good character uh, to have in the dressing room. He's an experienced player. He's a, he's a leader. Um, I think he's a, he's a good guy to have around. So I think he's been very, very useful for, uh, for Real Madrid and he's just loving this. He's having a great season. You can see the way that he's you know, celebrating the goals today. He's having the time of his life. He's, he's a Real Madrid fan. You know, he's always been a Real Madrid fan. And he's ended up at this late stage in his career at the club as the club's you know, first choice centre forward. OK, not always starting games, sometimes coming off the bench, but playing a lot and being important and scoring goals. And like I say, yeah, I think he's a, he's a really valuable player for this Real Madrid team. Getting on with it every time he's called upon. Right. And let's just put this into context and what the presence of Jose Lu means for Real Madrid, because you know, people have short-term memory. At this point last season, if Karim Benzema wasn't playing, okay, what were your options? Mariano Diaz. Mariano! Come on, play, right? In Hazard would play center forward at, at one point or another for Real Madrid last season. Yes, the, I just said in Hazard. Mariano Diaz. Those are the options. So, at the very least, you have a credible threat and a guy who has accomplished something in his career scoring goals. Yes, lesser teams. I understand it. But he gives you a credible threat in attack. And more importantly, he gives you a different look. You're not just having to depend on the tricky guys, on Vini and Rodrigo. This guy gives you an option to be more direct. If you're going to swing balls into the box, there is a big guy who can get on the end of a cross, and his movement inside the 18-yard box is usually pretty good. He creates enough separation from defenders. He can get on the end of crosses. Not the best finisher in the world, but gives you a different look. And today, that amounted to three points for Real Madrid. So when you think about where Real Madrid were in terms of the options in the center forward position and where they are now, outside of Karim Benzema, yes, Jose Lu is an upgrade to anything and everything else that they had available to them last season. Alex, sitting pitch side today, what else stood out to you from this Real Madrid side? I mean, Bellingham, always Bellingham. You know, again, it's, it's not a game that he's scored in, but it's a game in which he was seeing plenty of the ball. I, I think we're seeing more and more the way that he's... To talk about leaders, he's a leader in this in this Real Madrid team. He's a player who, who quite likes to get stuck in, who enjoys the the physical battle, who stands up to the to the opposition, who is is a star here. You know, where I was sat, the Hetafe fans behind the goal were, were shouting Jude, 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 pretty much right the way through the through the game because he is he, he is a superstar. I saw him just now, just as before we we came on air, actually talking to one of the fans here down by the uh, down by the tunnel. So Bellingham stands out. Bellingham always stands out. Um, I was impressed by Rodrigo coming off the bench. He's such a lovely player to watch. Rodrigo when he gets on the on the ball running at players looks like making things happen and as I said earlier I think he's a very useful player to have coming off the bench Rodrigo a go as if he's not starting games as well um, and yeah Real Madrid getting the, the job done against a team that, that can be a very awkward opponent and I think that, that's that, that's the big thing to take from from today's game is how a game that that, that could be a potential banana skin that could be problematic that you know we've seen teams come here and, and struggle we've seen a team like Barcelona come here and struggle uh, for example this season Real Madrid came here 
and made it look pretty pretty comfortable, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. And it's it was their game in hand. They now played the same number of games as everybody else. They're top of the table, you know, just ahead of, of Girona, who they play next weekend after the Madrid derby. So Madrid are in a pretty good place right now. They had that slight hiccup with the with the Copa del Rey elimination to Atletico, but otherwise in La Liga, it's it, it's been a really really good season. There's other other you know challenges on the horizon with the Champions League as well, but the league is looking is looking very very good. You know, in a way, it's it's been quite serene there. Their progress in La Liga this season. They only had that one defeat all season way back in, sept in September to Atletico as well. But, but since then, it's been pretty plain sailing for Real Madrid. When you think about all the obstacles they've had to sort of deal with along the way, the absence of Courtois that we've talked about, the absence of, of Militao, Alaba now, other injuries, Vinicius was out uh, for a while, all of that, and to have come through it the way they have done. And, you know, and, and pretty, like I say, in pretty straightforward fashion. And that was the case again tonight. That's what really stands out for me. Yeah, and one thing that does stand out, as Alex did just mention, the losses this season have come to the side they play next. Atleti on Sunday, they'll be at the Bernabeu for El Derby. It's Real Madrid against Atleti again.